Hey, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. This time we're going to talk about how to configure a Brocade ICX switch with an IP phone uh, using LLDP MED. Um, so there's another video uh, that uses CDP and uh, voice VLAN for a Cisco phone. Uh, this is generic, so pretty much any phone, um, including most Cisco. So, you know, Mitel, Shortel, um, Nortel, most Cisco's, Polycoms, pretty much anything out there can be configured with LLDP. So it's a industry standard and does far more than, um, you know, any of the proprietary protocols. So, you know, Cisco has CDP, uh, we have FTP or Foundry Discovery Protocol, there's EDP, there's JDP, there's multiple others, but LLDP was designed to be a standardized version of all those, but LLDP does so much more than any of the proprietary. So it's a bi-directional protocol and LLDP is from switch to switch. LLDP med is from end device to switch, right? So LLDP med only exists from the switch to a phone or switch to an access point or switch to a server or to a storage array or whatever it is. And we can not just read parameters, but we can set parameters. So we can tell a phone what VLAN it should be on, what QoS priority it should have. Um, we can tell a storage array that it should run lossless and here's its QoS priority. Um, you know, what VLAN it should be set for. We can talk to VMware. We can talk to, you know, pretty much anything that supports LLDP med and have a bi-directional conversation. So set parameters as well as reading parameters. So this video is pretty much a combination of multiple others. So in the past, I've done videos based on, you know, how to configure 802.1w rapid spanning tree, how to do dual mode, how to do VLANs, how to do inline power or PoE. Um, so we've, well, I've done multiple things in the past, and this is a combination to tie them all together uh, to do the most common um, PoE scenario and LLDP scenario, which is for phones, right? So. Um, in order to make this happen, we need, you know, most phones, almost all phones have two ports. One port goes to the switch and a second port is where you plug your VLAN into. And so we're going to send tag traffic for voice for the phone and untag traffic for the PC. Obviously, if we send tag traffic to most PCs, unless they're configured for it, they are going to think those are corrupted packets and drop them, right? A, a, a PC has, or a printer usually, has no interest in VLANs or VLAN tagging. So if it receives something with a VLAN tag, it'll drop that packet. So we're gonna configure uh, a VLAN 10 here. So VLAN 10, now we're gonna tag um, our ports. So one slash one slash one to, I don't know, one slash one slash five, okay? So we're gonna tag all the ports uh, going out to to our phones um, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on rapid spanning tree so the reason I'm going to turn on rapid spanning tree is because when you run regular spanning tree 802-1 W um, or 802.1 D 802.1 D um, will it runs fast uplink span, right? Or fast uh, uplink. And so what that does is it puts a port into forwarding in four seconds. Um, so it doesn't have to wait for the full 15 seconds listening, 15 seconds learning, um, which is, you know, a challenge with a PC or phone or something like that. Um, however, what, uh, what temporarily disables fast uplink span for a PC or something like that is that it must meet several criteria. One of those is it can't have tag VLANs on it. If it has tag VLANs on a port, we assume that it's not a PC or something that can, can, can um, not cause a loop in our environment. Um, and the other thing is, if we learn more than one MAC address, then we'll, we'll disable fast uplink span. So in this case, because we have a phone and then a PC connected, we break two rules. One, we have tag VLANs. Two, we learn more than one MAC address. So therefore, if I ran regular spanning tree, it would take 30 seconds to bring that port online, or in the event that there was a topology change, it would take 30 seconds to reconverge that port. So your phones would be down for 30 seconds, which is a bad thing. So in rapid spanning tree, we don't really have the concept of fast uplink span because the worst case scenario in, in 802.1w 
is two seconds if the root bridge fails. If anything else fails, it's less than a second. So we've already covered that off in rapid spanning tree. So we're just going to turn that on for the for the entire VLAN. Okay, and then we're going to create our second VLAN. Actually, before I do that, let me give that VLAN a name. So just for best practice purposes, we're going to say VLAN 10. We're going to give it a name and we're going to call it data. Okay. So then I'll jump back out of here. I'm going to create VLAN 20. We're going to name it voice. And so this isn't used anymore uh, or anywhere, I should say. It's just for your um, information, right? So when you go back into the switch and look at the VLANs, you're going to know what they do. Okay, so VLAN 20, and we're going to set exactly the same ports. So we are going to tag the same ports. We're going to turn on rapid spanning tree. And so we have our two VLANs created. We've got rapid spanning tree turned on on both of them. We've got all the ports. Now, I told you before that we, uh, we're we going to send untraffic to, uh, untagged traffic to the PCs. Uh, but when I configure those VLANs, I just told it to tag both. And so what I need to do is under the ports, we're going to uh, set dual mode. And we'll talk about that when we get there in a second. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on LLDP, so LLDP run. We don't need to turn on FTP and CDP. You can do that if you want, but, but LDP is all you need in most cases. Um, okay, then we're going to um, set a network policy. So uh, when we set up this network policy, we're going to go LDP med because it's end user device, right? Uh, we create a network dash policy, and I could have multiple policies. You don't have to have just one. And then what kind of application you're setting the policy for. So the options are guest voice, uh, guest voice signaling, smartphone voice, streaming video, et cetera, et cetera. The two we care about for a phone more times than not is voice and voice signaling. So in this case, I'm going to create a policy for voice. And I'm going to tell it that my voice is tagged VLAN 20, right? Because I set up my VLAN 20 as, as my voice VLAN. Uh, and then I'm going to set up a priority, which is a layer two class of service priority. Um, and then it's zero to seven for 802.1p, right? So we'll, we'll give it a priority of five. Uh, and then a DSCP or a diff serve priority of um, 46, let's say. Um, and then lastly, you're going to specify what ports. So uh, you can do all here, or you can do a specific set of ports. So Ethernet 111 to uh, 115. Okay, so what I've done is I've created this policy that says uh, on those ports 111 to 115, tell the device at the other end to send its voice traffic on VLAN 20 uh, with a class of service priority of 5 and a diff serve priority or a DSCP priority of 46. Um, and so we can create another policy, uh, med network dash policy, um, and say we do uh, voice signaling, which would be the other uh, uh, main one you would do, right? Um, and then VLAN 20 again, and we can set a different priority on that if you want. So you could set that as, you know, priority four, uh, DSC pre priority of 42, doesn't really matter, um, port Ethernet 111 to 115. Whoops, what did I do? Oh, sorry, forgot the tag. Okay. Four TSCP 42 ports Ethernet 111 to 115. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at that. So there's our two uh, policies that we just created, right? So for voice traffic, we're going to send it tagged on VLAN 20. Class of service priority of five, diff serve priority of 46 on those ports. Um, and then for voice signaling, again, tagged on VLAN 20, class of service priority of four, um, 
normally it would be the other way around. Your your voice signaling is is uh, is just as important, if not more so. Um, and then anyway, and a diff surf priority of 42. So so you can have multiple um, policies. You can have different policies on different ports. That's all good. But basically, instead of having to configure your phones manually or configuring your phones by them going to um, you know a TFTP server and downloading a config and rebooting it, you can have them set their priorities with LLDP and do it that way. Uh, okay, so we've got LLDP set up and ready to go. We've got our VLANs set up. We've got span tree on our VLANs. Then we have to set up the interfaces themselves. So we're going to go interface E111 to 115 and set up the group all, all at once. Um, so we need to do a few things. One, we, first we need to tell it what VLAN is, our PCs are connected to that we're going to untag. So we know that the VLAN 10 we call data that's the one we want untagged. So we're going to say dual mode, and then the number that follows the dual mode, in this case 10, is the VLAN number that's going to, going to be untagged. So you can only ever have one untagged VLAN, but you can have as many tagged as you want. So the number that follows dual mode is the untagged. Everything else that's not representing that dual mode command is still going to be tagged out that port. So 20 in our case. If I didn't put a number, if I just said dual mode and hit enter, it would send the default VLAN, VLAN 1 traffic untagged and everything else tagged. Okay, so then uh, we are going to finish our spanning tree configuration. So we're going to do a spanning dash tree. Uh, and in this case, it's wrapped spanning tree. And we're going to do an admin edge port. So um, if you watch the rapid spanning tree video, you would know this, but uh, uh, rapid spanning tree, the standard says you need to allow for a case where somebody takes a hub and plugs it in between multiple rapid spanning tree bridges. And because rapid spanning tree is generally point to point, it will fail over quickly if you don't put a point to point Mac. It'll fail over quickly, but it fails back in 30 seconds, right? 15 seconds listening, 15 learning. The admin edge port command actually differentiates a topology change. So if a topology change happens on an edge port, it doesn't affect your, your core switching ports and vice versa. So if something happens in your uplinks, it doesn't affect your edge ports, right? So we're going to designate that as an edge port. Um, then we're going to turn on inline power. So we need to turn on PoE. It's off by default on all the ports. When we turn on inline power, we have a few options. We can power, we can set a power limit. So we can say um, only allow up to seven watts on this port or, or 12 watts on this port. Or you can do a power by class and say only allow class two power um, or class three power, etc. If I just do inline power, which I'm going to do, it assumes that it's class zero. Um, and we just saw that our my two phones power up there. PoE power is enabled on 111 and 112. Um, it assumes it's a class zero. So a class zero will take whatever the maximum that port is capable of, right? So class one is four watts, class two is seven, class three is um, uh, 15.4, right? And then a class four is 30 watts, and a class zero is whatever the highest that port's capable of. So in this case, these are all PoE plus ports, so it'll allocate 30 watts until it hears otherwise. So, but if you're running out of power, if you don't have enough power budget to power all the ports on the device, then you might want to set a power uh, limit or a power class. Okay, we're also going to set, uh, so f as far as QoS goes, we honor layer two QoS by default. So out of the box without you doing anything, layer two 802.1p class of service is turned on. So if that's all I want to do is layer two um, class of service, there's nothing I need to do. If I want to trust diff serve or DSCP, I just need to configure that on the port. And it's as easy as trust DSCP, which says, just says, don't trust class of service anymore, trust the DSCP bits. It just depends on your environment. It depends on what your phone vendor prefers, uh, depends on, you know, whether they're tagged or untagged ports, etc. cetera. But, um, but that's completely up to you. So I'm going to trust DSCP in, in this particular case. The last thing you may want to do for a best practice is turn on loop detection. And so the reason I would use loop detection on, on, a, on an IP phone port is because 
you've got two ports on the back of a phone and those work like a switch, right? If we turn on per VLAN spanning tree, which is what we're running here, if somebody plugs both of those ports of the phone into different ports on a switch or into different ports on a, on, on, uh, on um, different switches, it is not per VLAN spanning tree will not detect that loop because spanning tree only runs within its own VLAN. It's not running from VLAN to VLAN. And so therefore, if you bridge two VLANs together, it won't see that loop. However, if you run loop detection, it will, and it will catch that. And if you don't think that that's a real world scenario, I have had that happen in production environments many, many times where somebody takes two ports on the back of a phone and plugs them both into the wall and causes a loop. That is a real world scenario. So loop detect is just one more way um, to, to protect yourself from a layer two loop. Okay, so that's it. So let's look at our configuration. So we built our two VLANs. We turned on spanning tree on our VLANs. We tagged all the ports. Um, then we configured uh, ports 111 to 115 here. We turn on loop detect. We set dual mode 10, so send untagged frames on VLAN 10. We configured it as a spanning tree uh, admin edge port for rapid spanning tree. We turned on inline power. We trolled it to trust DSCP. Then, um, well, prior to that in the configuration stage, but it doesn't matter, we turned on LLDP or LLDP med, and then we set up our, our policies, our network policies to say send tell it the device at the other end, send voice traffic on VLAN 20 with a class of service priority of five, diff server priority of 46, and then voice signaling traffic, send it tagged on 20 with a priority of four and a DSCP value of 42. So if all is well here, if I do a show inline power, we see two ports. So I actually have a Cisco uh, phone on 111 uh, it's administratively on, it's operationally on, it's consuming 3.7 watts at the moment. We've allocated 6.5, almost 6.6, .6, and it's told us that it's a class two device. On port two, which is a short tail phone, uh, we're consuming 6.7, it's allocated 15.4, and it's, it says that it's a class three device on that port. So that's working fine. Um, now, as far as show LDP neighbor goes, Unfortunately, I don't have a call manager or a, or a, a PBX for the Shortel, um, so it's not booted up all the way. So it's not going to talk to me from an LDP neighbor perspective, um, but it's still going to receive those things. So when it when it finds its call manager and starts to boot up, then it will um, set its parameters with LDP appropriately, right? So for VLAN 20, um, we can see the Cisco phone there on port 111. If we do a show LDP neighbor detail. Here we can see that, um, so for example, it's showing me that it's a Cisco 7961G. Um, it's a bridge telephone. Um, it is um, my local port, 111 is where it's connected at. Um, and also we can see that it's a, a LDP and, um, endpoint class three. Um, its voice application is tag traffic on VLAN 20. So it got that from us. It got that from our LDB packet we sent. It's sending its L2 packets. So it's, it's uh, class service packets with priority five. It's diff serve packets of priority six. Um, and same thing, so the voice signaling, again, is being sent on VLAN 20. And then we can get some more information. This one here on port one slash two slash one, this is another uh, brocade device. Um, so port uh, one slash two slash one at the remote side is connected to my one slash two slash one. So this happens to be another 7250, which we're seeing. But anyway, so so that's it. So relatively straightforward to configure. You can set up those LTP med policies and configure, you know, multiple different applications and, and how you uh, configure your neighbors. Okay, so that's it. And uh, thanks for joining. Take care.